Hey, this is our biology brief, episode one, where we review research on human health. Today, we're gonna to be going over the paper, life expectancy can increase by 10 years by just shifting your diet. This was recently published in Nature Few Food. Uh, it was on November 20th of 2023. It was done by um, authors Holland and Mathers. And uh, I'm Kylie, I'm the CEO of Oleolive. This is Jim, the CTO of Oleolive. He's been researching everything for the past 30 years, and we thought it'd be interesting to just kind of talk about this and uh, have a discussion around it. So one of the more interesting points that I saw in this paper was that if you switch or if you move away from fish, it actually increases your lifespan. And I don't know why that is, is true. So if, you're, if, if am I reading this right? The hazard ratio, if you look at the hazard ratio in this paper, so I'll just kind of show this really quick. It's like I got a bunch of color-coded boxes. And what is the hazard ratio in general? Can you explain that where I can understand? Well, the hazard right? ratio is um, a, a change, either good or bad, in terms of an outcome. So let's say your hazard ratio for death um, went down, uh, one being one, and went to 0.9, that means you're 10% less likely to die. So a hazard ratio of one is perfectly correlated with death. Or in it, this You've got to start somewhere with a hazard, hazard ratio, right? Okay. So you usually set the control at one, and then the hazard ratio goes up, 1.2, yeah. it goes down 0.8, et cetera. So, well, in this scenario, like a hazard ratio of one would be no improvement in lifespan. It, it would be that, yes. That, okay. That's right. so, but, and so if you look at the hazard ratio for fish, it's a one. So by consuming more fish, their lifespan does not increase. Is that, am I reading that correctly? No, you're actually reading that wrong. So the, the Q1 is the lowest quintile for the uh, people who are taking. In other words, they're the ones taking less fish than anyone else. And as you move to the right, your fish consumption goes uh, up. Oh, okay, so I did read that wrong. So, but they're saying a median amount of fish is actually correlated with the highest lifespan. Yes, that's correct. Not uh, the highest quintile. So just, again, for those that actually go to the paper, the, the red is basically um, one meaning this is a group that are taking in the lowest amount of whole grains, vegetables, fruit, nuts, legumes, and fish. And as you move to the right, you're increasing that. And as you can see moving to the right in this table, you go from red to green to blue, which is better. So the argument is you want to take in more fish, more legumes, more nuts, more fruit. Why do you think that the legumes play such a role in longevity? Well, I think it's um, a combination of probably um, they have high levels of protein, and they're also filled with nutrients that um, you can get in, in a fairly high. You think it's phenol level. levels? It could be phenol levels in the legumes, um, and these are legumes. Just to let people know, these are primarily beans and black beans and things like. Well, that. Well, the other thing that the other thought I had about the legumes is that they generally are pretty filling. You eat, you eat a handful of like mixed nuts, you eat a handful of beans or anything like that. You don't you don't really begin to crave a lot of other processed stuff. And it may be just be like caloric replacement for like less processed things. I think things. that's exactly right. And it, and as as you know, that a caloric reduction leads to an increase in, in lifespan across the board. Yeah. So uh, that could in fact be uh, the case where less is more. Yeah. Well, so one of the interesting takeaways, the main takeaway from the study, was that forty-year-old males and females in the same population, even adjusted for BMI and lifestyle. They, if they moved from an unhealthy dietary pattern to a longevity-associated dietary pattern, they gained 10.8 and 10.4 years, respectively, in average lifespan, so in females and males. Um, that's huge. So, you know, you're 40 years old. You assume you have, I think, 43 years on average left. Well, that, well actually, for a 40-year-old in the U.K. now in this study, and this can probably translate worldwide, for a 40-year-old uh, who has an unhealthy diet, they're probably going to live maybe 35 more years, and you're absolutely right. So you get a 30 percent increase That's in lifespan. That's huge, and we're talking about starting at 40 years old. Yeah. If you start even younger, of course, with that, that the impact is even bigger. But here's the good news for older people like me. So if you start, let's say you're eating unhealthy up to 70, the fact that you reach 70 means you're probably going to reach 80. So your odds of getting older go up as you get older. Yeah. Um, but even for these people, if you suddenly went from instead of eating cheeseburgers all the time and French fries and drinking uh, sugary Cokes, et cetera, if you actually went from that to eating a healthy diet, you would gain anywhere from three to four more years. Well, it's the same percentage gain, yeah. whether you start at 40 or start at 70 on average. So if you start at 70, you gain about three years. Right. And you're with your lifespan being 10 to 11 years, three into 10, 11 is roughly 30%. That's correct. And the same thing at 40. So 
but it's not as though you should ignore it as if you're seven years old. That's correct. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, the United Kingdom in terms of, and they're talking about a United Kingdom diet. So right. what do you what do you what do you think that refers to? And what fish and chips? Yeah, a poor diet would be fish and chips. That's right. And Maybe that's why fish is only fast. moderately accepted because all the yeah. fish is fried. Well, in in the UK, unfortunately, that's probably Maybe, true. I don't know. Um, but in, in thinking about this, if you look at the table in terms of what are healthy components in a diet, it reminds me a lot of uh, the actual Mediterranean diet. In fact, other papers allude to the Mediterranean diet shifting into that and increasing your lifespan. So, we're, and we're looking at things that 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 people we're not talking about horrible foods, nuts are good. Um, who doesn't like black bean soup? Um, Whole wheat bread, I think is good. I mean, who doesn't eat their oatmeal in the morning? Right? Yeah, legumes, fruit, nuts, um, whole grains, which is interesting. But I guess like non-processed whole grains. Can yes, not processed. You want the bit. entire grain itself, the endosperm and the and the shell and the, the hull, etc. Yes. Yeah, and and then the other thing that's that's interesting is people who moved away from red meat experienced a higher lifespan. Is, do you think that's activity level related, or do you think like so? If you're like a, a really athletic, uh, you put out, a, you burn a lot of calories every day, and you need protein. Like, would that be associated with moving away from red meat too? Like, I think the red, I think there? the problem, I think the red meat issue is not the protein per se or the the quality of the protein. It has to do with the fat levels, uh, bad fat levels. Okay. That increase okay. cholesterol, etc. Now, somebody would argue, well, how about salmon? It's fatty, yeah, but it's a mega fats. It's bet. It's it's fish oil heart fats, healthy, and yeah. heart healthy fats. Mm. So I think the red meat, and that's the striking thing if you look at this, because you know our population likes to have everything distilled down to, just tell me a couple of points. All right, yeah. stop drinking sugary uh, uh, drinks and don't eat as much red meat. And, st and you're gonna replace it with something. We'll drink water and instead of red meat, have salmon once, once in a get while. Get away from processed grains. Get away, totally get away from processed foods. And yeah. that's tough to do because the society is based too large. Well, it's so much easier. Joints, right? It's so it's much easier, easier to yeah. shop in the middle of the grocery store. That's, exa that's exactly That's exactly. That's what it is. Yeah, you stay around the ring, the outside ring of the grocery store, it's generally the healthier food. Um, so the strongest positive associations with mortality were for sugar sweetened beverages and processed meat. That's like, if you're gonna eliminate one thing from your diet, eliminate those two things from your diet and you can instantly grab some that's, health. That's exactly right, but but realize that as humans, we're occasionally gonna want that big T-bone steak. That's sure. okay. Well, I so, don't know if that's processed meat, is it? it not, no, it's not. We're talking about things like salami and bologna as processed yeah. meats and, and yeah. hot dogs and things like that. But this doesn't mean if you're at a barbecue and somebody has a hot dog, don't be a prude and go, I can't have that hot Yeah, have it, relish the hot dog. Just don't eat hot dogs every day. Reduce the intake of hot dogs. And do you think the processed meat is associated with like sodium content? I think it's sodium. Sodium is terrible. The sugar contents, things like nitrosamines, which are carcinogens, I think mm. that plays a big role in all this. Yeah. Um, so stay away from processed foods as much as you can. And so let's talk about the study just in general. So this was a meta study, it looks like. It wasn't a particular clinical trial. Um, it was done over the course, I mean, it was done kind of looking back on dietary patterns over the course of years, potentially, yeah. but it wasn't a particular clinical trial that like took a subset of a thousand people and then monitored their, their diets for 40 years. That's correct. This kind of looked at, at longevity or associated eating patterns with different groups of people and did a meta-analysis on them. So. You know, what do you think of the integrity of that data? Do you think that holds up, or do you think it should be in a more controlled environment? And keep in mind, and that's a very good point, it's, it's, it's a model, and it's based on um, lots of research done looking at combinations of, of diet and impact on longevity. So the model, I think, is fairly relevant. It's consistent with other studies. But keep in mind, it, it's a model, and everybody's different. So, you, you know, you could live uh, and eat the best lifestyle of all, and, and, and not live long. It's, it's one of the many factors that will increase longevity. So, you know, again, even though we're focused on a paper of, of food habits, one of the first things you can do if you smoke is stop smoking, start eating better. Yeah. Um, you know, don't do risky behaviors, et cetera. Cut down on your, on your drinking. Yeah. So all of these things, you know, as a series progress in what we're talking about, a lot of these things that impact longevity are, uh, multiple things. Diet is clearly important. It may be the most important thing you can change right now to, to live longer and healthier. Yeah, diet, exercise, caloric restriction. I think 
over time, and we can talk about it briefly, I think there's been many, many studies that have said that people or animals who consume fewer calories on average live a significant amount longer. And we will, in, in subsequent uh, discussions, we can certainly go into that, but that's, and, and nutritional uh, impact can Im influence that also. So, yes, so briefly, the, the negative association of sugar-sweetened beverages with longevity, you think that's just a factor of your body becoming desensitized to insulin over time? Or is it the inflammation caused by the excess sugar I think consumption? That's a very good point. I think it's a combination of both. And in fact, um, one of the things that we haven't really discussed is why does your lifespan go down if you eat unhealthy? Is it just because the food gets stuck and you fall over dead? No. It's because the four horsemen are now on their horses and riding. Cancer, uh, uh, neurodegeneration, um, diabetes and metabolic syndrome, things like that. And diet influences that in, in a very major way, so. How does sugar influence cancer in your body? Does, is there, a, can you speak to that at all? Yeah, so that's actually very interesting. So um, the tumor cells uh, take on a whole different form of metabolism than normal cells. So normal cells will take up glucose, and they're very efficient at making the currency, which is ATP. Cancer cells do that differently, so they use a different process to degrade glucose. It's not as efficient, so they need a lot more glucose. So tumor cells actually hmm. take up a lot of more glucose than normal cells. So yes, glucose can so drive... Glucose will feed tumor cells? Essentially, essentially. That, that's correct. And there, there's solid evidence that, um, that tumor cells require more glucose than Would normal cells. Would it make them more metastatic? It can. It can influence that. Um, huh. The other thing about glucose, of course, is, and inflammation is huge in all of this. So chronic inflammation, unlike acute inflammation, if you get a bacterial infection and your body responds, the inflammation goes away. Chronic inflammation caused by stress and diet and lots of things in the environment, that can really be dangerous and can lead to a lot of these diseases like diabetes. Yeah. So inflammation is a key thing and, and uh, your diet can have a major impact on chronic inflammation. Clearly, I mean, it can have an impact on longevity just associated with this. I mean, this is people moving from a relatively unhealthy diet to a longevity associated diet, got the biggest benefit, obvious. But still, moving from a median diet to a longevity associated diet, they got roughly half of the right. same value. So if you think you eat healthy, but you move to a more healthy diet, a longevity associated diet, you still gain half of the, that you gain five years of longevity of lifespan from 40. So, I mean, still worthwhile. I mean, that's still a 15%. It's, cer it's certainly worthwhile, but as, as you know, in, in our society now, in terms of all the diet fads, that w what is the number one thing that happens? People go on a diet and they can't sustain it. So whatever you do, don't just jump ship to something. Do it incrementally. You know, reduce the number of Cokes you drink a week from, from 10 to 5 and then to 4 to the next week. Slowly add these other things. If you actually jump shift and, and, and change your diet totally, you're not going to sustain it. It's you're going to way harder it. to keep it's on. It's way harder. Cool. Yes. Well, that was a, that's, I think that's an interesting discussion around that. Um, if you want to read the paper, let's, can you see that okay? That's the paper we talked about. I think it's really interesting. It's an easy read, especially if you're not like super scientifically literate. It's in pretty good lay terms. I think the graphs are relatively easy to find or uh, easy to follow. And uh, I'm the CEO of Olilive. This is Jim, the CTO of Olilive. So like I mentioned at the beginning, um, we're uh, a company that's focused on developing biotechnology products. One of our products is, is Olagen. Olagen is an oleocanthal supplement. It's extracted from extra virgin olive oil which we widely believe to be one of the most healthy things you can consume associated with the Mediterranean diet and everything else. So if you want to learn more about Olagen, then you can find it on our website, oleocanthal.co. Uh, thanks. Bye. Until next time.